Welcome back to the third chair, everybody. My name is Ryan Adams. This is my main man, Joshua Hall. Sir. And we're back. Yeah. Oh. Oh, what did I do? It's getting worse. Oh, it's crazy. <laughs> oh god, just take that. Oh my gosh. It got worse like, and yeah. worse. Yeah, I didn't like that. <laughs> Oh my god. I don't think I've ever done it before. This is my blackness. <laughs> like, what's going on? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, demonic. No. Oh. <laughs> Never mind. I'm talking about, oh. <laughs> my fault, my fault, my fault. No, yeah. Um, yeah, welcome back, everybody. Yeah. I feel it's like we already chair. talked about everything because we just did like a whole. Mid. I, like, I did, yeah, I just, I just told everybody what I already did. I told everybody my intro. I don't have an intro. I just All want right. to get right into it. All right, let's do it. Okay. Uh, you want to start? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't want to start. Nah, that's cool. <laughs> 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 but earlier today, I was thinking, um, just like, well, I was reading... In Matthew, that's like because now after I've read through the Bible, weird flex. After I've read through, <laughs> <laughs> after I've read through the Bible, I read it a little bit differently now, like at different points in time. Like I'll just feel I want to <clears throat> read certain books. So like I started with Hebrews and now I'm reading Matthews. Well, not Matthew, it's Matthew. one Matthew. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's one Matthew. Um side note, isn't it kind of funny how when people have Bible names, we like shorten it? So like somebody Matthew would be like, Oh, what's up, Matt? But we would never be like, yo, I was reading in Matt the other day. <laughs> like, we don't do that. We just say the whole John. Yeah. But I was reading in Matthew, and I was in a part where the Pharisees and the Sadducees are like, they're they're all trying to tempt Jesus to like, they're trying to trick him into proving that he's not who he says he is, you know? And their belief is like so strong that when Jesus turns over the, the tables in the temple, they they're, it says that they were like displeased with him. And that's when they started to plot. That's when they wanted to kill him. But the only reason they didn't kill him was because they knew that other people believed that he was the son of God. Mm. But they themselves did not believe that. And so I was just thinking about that and how they always were asking God, like, yo, show us a sign. Like, show us a sign. Show us a sign type time. And then he was like, bruh, there's not, not going to be a sign. <laughs> like, the only sign you're going to get is the sign of Jonah, which is like, we were talking about this with uh, our boy Bryce. And... Basically, the sign of Jonah is like the same way how Jonah was in the belly of the belly of the the whale, the fish, the great okay, fish. Okay, yeah. <laughs> the, the, yeah, the fish for three days, and he was came out. This that's the same the same way Jesus is gonna be uh, dead and he's gonna rise after three days. Mm-hmm. He said that's the only sign you're gonna get because, mind you, like Jesus had been performing miracles for the last three. Well, I don't know if it had been three years yet, but he's been doing a lot of stuff. And when this happened, they were actually in Jerusalem. So it's like, it's supposed to be a very holy place. Jesus has done miracles here, mm-hmm. you know? It says even as he turned the temples over, he healed people. Mm-hmm. Like he healed sick people before their eyes. And they're still talking about something like, oh yeah, we need a sign. And so it was crazy to me because I was like, wow. Jesus has already done so many marvelous things in just a few years. And we're still like, yeah, but I'm going to need some more proof, though. You know? And it's like our disbelief is so big. And in their case, they were so attached to seeing uh, Christianity work for them how they wanted it to work for them that they couldn't see that literally, like, the man himself, Jesus Christ, was right there. Mm -hmm. You know? Not only that they, they, they didn't notice him, but other people are noticing who he is, and they are outwardly saying, no, that's not him, you know? It'd be one thing to just see Jesus and not, you know, just walk by him on the street and happen to not realize. But for someone else to point it out, be like, yo, that's Jesus. And they're like, nah, that's not him. It'd be like the equivalent to seeing LeBron James walk down the street and you're like, yo, that's LeBron. And I'm like, oh, that's not LeBron, you know? Mm-hmm. What are you talking about? Like, it's definitely LeBron. <laughs> Never. you. Well, it's not. And... I was just thinking about that, bro. And I was like, wow. Thinking about, like, our own walk. Because we would look at them and be like, yeah, I would never do that. But, like, we kind of do. We don't have it the same way as them. Like, Jesus is not walking by us on the street that we know of. But God does work in our lives. And we have seen it. And sometimes, like, when you have that spiritual experience with God, like, you might cry or 
you might like feel tingles or whatever, or maybe like if you spoke in tongues before, uh, there's a number of things that could happen where you were like, oh, snap, God is real and he's with me. Mm -hmm. What we do is the farther we get away from that experience, the less value it holds to us, mm -hmm. so, like a lot of the times. Yeah. And it really shouldn't be that way. And then as a result, when we need some faith for something daily or maybe even faith for something big, we're like doubting God. And we often turn to be like, well, I, I, I need to feel that thing again. Or I need to, I need to see something else to like re-up my belief. And when I was thinking about it, I was like, yo, Loki, we're kind of like, treating God like, like a Netflix subscription mm. where it's like, to renew my faith, you got to show me a new, a new Miracle. thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to like, all right, make me feel tingly again. Do that thing you do again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel you know? you, yeah. So, so I can, and then, and then I'll be like, oh yeah, yeah, you really got, you really yeah, got. Yeah, you know you. what I'm saying? But he's like, yeah. bro, I've been me, bro. You know? I do get you. And that's, um, I be trying not to fall into that, honestly, because it's, it's easy, especially after like God has shown you like certain stuff or after he like, Encounters you in a certain way, you know, that thing just feels so great because mm -hmm. you know it's God in that moment. It's like, I've never felt this close to you before. Yeah. And I want to feel this close again. So as time moves on and you're holding on to that moment, you start to question that moment. It's like, yo, did this really mm -hmm. happen like that? Mm -hmm. Or am I just making some things up? X, yeah. Y, and Z, yada, yada, yada. God, can you do it again? Mm -hmm. Because like now, nah, I just want to believe that that was you back there. But that being you back there is a reason why my faith increased. So right. if I'm forgetting that, that is you back there, my faith isn't, like, what's it holding on to now? Yeah. Like, what was the foundation of my faith increasing? Yeah. You feel me? So now, God, I need you to recreate that moment so my faith can stay strong in that way. Mm. You know? So there's a lot of things that go into it. Um, That was just an example. But, no, most definitely. Because I, I, I definitely be trying to, because even with um God, uh, I try to, like, when, when, when you worship, mm -hmm. I try to make sure I'm not searching for a feeling. I'm not searching for, like, anything, really. I'm just trying to express my love towards God and everything, yeah. you know? And, like, for me, I personally feel like God has actually, like, sent a wind. I've talked to you about this before. He's, like, sent, like, a little small, gentle wind, like, either in my room. And he's a, in here before. And I've just, <laughs> like, yeah, you feel me? And I've just, um, you know, just felt, like, a little gust of wind. And I was like, and there is a vent right there. Now that I look at yeah. it now. But yeah. it's not on your side, though. No, nah, it's not. Because that don't come from this way. And I was just, what the heck? But, yeah, like, I I felt when, like, and I felt like one side of my body would be cold, other side would be regular, you mm. know? It would just be weird. And I haven't felt that in a while, though, you know? And it was mm. always happening while I was worshiping. Like, it happened, like, all the time while I was worshiping, you know? And uh, I, when, it start, when it stopped happening, like, I was kind of looking forward to it mm -hmm. during worship because I was mm -hmm. like, I want to feel that again. Yeah. I want to make sure the air was Because it does on. feel, it feels nice. Yeah, it does like, feel nice. Like, to feel nice. God's yeah. presence is a really it's, great it's thing. It's like, yo, you really just touched me like that? Yeah. You feel me? Like, why? Like, why'd you choose right now to do that? Why? Yeah, bro. There's so many questions, so many bro, everything. Because that joint, I, I know, bro, like, at this, at the, at the, as we're saying, like, stop looking for... Like, don't worship to, to, so God can prove to you that he's real, you mm -hmm. know? Like, that's very true. And that's what I was going to say to you. Like, one of the things, like, things changed for me when I stopped worshiping to feel God's presence and started worshiping because I know he's my father yeah. who can hear me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I start praying. Now when I do praise and worship, I'm like, God, hear my song to you. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I'm talking to you. This is for you, God. Rather than being like, all right, I know when I put this song on and I start praising, I know God is going to come and give me the validation or assurance that I need. Yeah, right. You know, like, because if you always need a, a validation or assurance, then you don't actually believe in anything. Right. Your belief is only as strong and as, um, hmm, your, 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 your belief is only as strong and as long-lasting as the experience itself. Mm -hmm. And like how we said, the further you get away, the less power it's going to hold because... You didn't actually, you were not actually, um, the experience confirmed your belief rather than you just believing by faith, you know? Because that's like two totally different things. But feeling God's presence is just mad nice. It is. And like, that's another reason why it's so important to be good represent good representations of God while we walk on this earth. Because like you said, Jesus, is, he's not just walking like on earth anymore. But like mm -hmm. you're walking on earth. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm walking on earth, you know? And if God's inside of me, then that's another chance for someone else to see Jesus. Because, like, bro, the, the world's so ugly. Like, nowadays especially, you know? It's so it's rare to find someone with a mindset like me and you. Mm -hmm. You know? It, yeah. It's just, like, 
you talk to any other like black man or any other man in general, they're not, even if they are a Christian, they're not like, they're not like all in with it. Yeah. You know, and it, it's like sad to say, but like, that's why it's important to like really, if you're going to represent Jesus, like represent Jesus. Yeah. Like, it's Don't gonna play be, about it. Yeah. It's going to be the faith for somebody else. Cause if someone who's an unbeliever sees you playing around with your walk with God, it'll be like, oh, he's, he's just in his religion. They're going to think you're a real Christian. They just won't think much of God. Exactly. And that's not cool. Mm-mm. Because God really is real. And so then when you get to judgment day, then what? Yeah. Now it's like, yo, if you just will live a little bit better, you could have impacted him in a different way. Yeah, bro. You know? Mm. Edwin, that's a big deal, bro. And, and I think the thing that stuck out to me most when you were talking, you said you don't find a lot of people with that mindset. Mm-hmm. And, I, you know, that's just like a word to us. But if you really think about it, it's like, oh, that word actually means what it what it says. Like your mind is set yeah. a certain way. And to believe God's word is to allow him to undo your mind and put it back together with his truth. Mm-hmm. You know? And I feel like that is probably that's what you do. You're, you probably will spend your whole life doing that. And it's like the hardest thing to do. Mm. Because you're constantly like, you're seeing so much reality in front of you, or you're going by off your past experiences in your own life, hard, concrete evidence, and then here's God's truth being like, yeah, but. Mm. Like, that happened. That's true that it happened, but it doesn't have to, though. Mm, I feel you. But you know, you know, um, I, I just definitely just detoured. That's not... <laughs> it was just a thought in my head. And I was like, dang, that's not responding to what he just said. <laughs> Can I say it anyway? Yeah. <laughs> because just go off the overall topic. <laughs> um, I'm so sorry. That's, bro, you don't have to apologize. I, I don't know why I just thought about that. I was like, oh, wow, okay. But <laughs> like, that's kind of like the whole thing we're talking about um, holding on to a certain experience with God before. Mm-hmm. Like, after Moses died and it was Joshua's turn next, Joshua, you know, he was... He was next in line. I don't remember what the Bible said about his feelings in the moment, but you can imagine that he would have felt like, oh, dang, it's really my time. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Moses is really gone. Shucks. Like, yeah, like, you know I me. Mean? So, like, <sighs> Joshua was with Moses as he was doing all these things leading mm-hmm. Israel, you know? Yeah. So, like, I'm sure Joshua would have been holding on to the moments that God was being God walking with Moses mm. and performing all these miracles. And now Joshua's like, okay, now it's my turn mm-hmm. to be in Moses' place and God's going to do these miracles yeah. for me and for us. But now the only difference is I'm the leader. Mm-hmm. But I got to believe that God's going to do what he did for Moses the same way he's going to do it for me. Yeah, bro. You know? But he's holding on to something that he was a part of in a way, yeah. but it wasn't necessarily his experience yeah. and, and, like, directly. It was yeah. an indirect experience. Like, for example... Like, um, he has to now remember, um, because if Joshua was there, the whole, that means that he was also with them when they left from, from Egypt. Yeah, he was like, there the whole he's time. He's been there the whole he's time. He's the whole time, yeah. So he has to remember, yeah, we, brought, we came through the Red Sea. Mm-hmm. He has to remember, oh, snap, we crossed over the Jordan. Yeah. He has to remember, oh, snap, it rained manna and quail. Right. Oh, snap. Moses, he cured us. He cured the people from the snake venom. Mm -hmm. Oh, snap. Moses, like, hit a rock and water came out. Like, he has to remember those things, and they can't become faint memories, Mm -hmm. or his faith is going to die. Even with, see, with that too, seven disciples, not seven. Why did I say seven? I don't know. That was random, right? Yeah. Twelve disciples, well... 11. <laughs> they got 12. They got, they got 12. 12. One of them, with the time period I'm talking about, he, he was oh, already okay, dead. Okay, okay. So, 11 disciples now. <laughs> but after Jesus has left, um, and Peter, Paul, and all this, Paul was a part. That, that's what we was talking about, too. Paul wasn't in that group right, right away. No. Yeah. But he's not, he's not, like, because even, no. Go ahead. Keep Actually, going. no, I want to talk about Paul said then. Because but that wasn't Paul's direct experience because he wasn't with the disciples when mm. they was doing their things, was he? No. Yeah. He was off killing them. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Paul, he was off killing. Paul mentions like Jesus a lot, a, like a lot, you know, mm. in his letters. He always talks about like having a strong faith in Jesus and like what we can do now because Jesus has, they did the work on the cross also and all that. Mm-hmm. But that way, you wasn't there. Yeah. You feel me? So what experiences are you holding on to other than the word of God? Because you lie. I wonder if Paul was at Jesus's crucifixion. Tight, right? Because he was killing Christians, so it would make a lot of sense oh, for him to want to. Oh, that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it would make sense 
Because Paul was Paul was Roman, ain't he? Yeah. Yeah. So he, it makes sense that, and he was a purebred. Pretty, he was a notable, like he was a notable figure in Roman culture. Yeah. Like yeah. before being Christian. Paul. Like Paul. as Saul, he would like <laughs> as when he was Saul. He was notable yeah. in, in culture. That was one of the things that he said he could boast about when yeah. he was talking about that if I so, wanted to boast. So it would make sense that he may have been present at Jesus' crucifixion. Was he, he was he wasn't me. he wasn't turned by? Wait, no, because nah. Wait, no. Mm-mm, he wasn't turned until after Jesus was already gone. That's true. Yeah. That's why I was confused when we was talking about it. Because God didn't God, God was the one that that called Paul. Yeah, but yeah. And he, but he had to know who he had to know the works of Jesus because he was killing Christians. That's true. He this had is, to know the work of Jesus. This is why I was confused when we was talking about Paul. Because I said like, Paul's not the Old Testament, but God was the one talking to Paul. But Paul, God doesn't talk that much in the New Testament either. It's usually Jesus, Jesus, Jesus and yeah. then and then the disciples and apostles. Right. Yeah. But God was the one that was called that called Paul out of um yeah yeah from walking. Yeah. Which is why I was confused. Yeah. No, it was not. It was God. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, no. But it no, also he... it also kind of makes sense to me, too, why it was God and not, like, one of the apostles, because that was in the land where, like, think about it, bro. Paul is the Christian killer. He is. <laughs> why? And then think, again, think about the disciples. Which one of the disciples is going out there? No. <laughs> <laughs> Peter might. <laughs> Peter. That's yeah. it. You know, like, Peter might. Peter and John. Yeah. That's probably it. Yeah. You know, because the rest of the disciples, not saying they don't have faith, but Peter and John, their faith was in a different place. Right. It was just different. And so you think about, like, even, even not even just saying, like, a thing about them being afraid, but God called them to ministry in specific places. Mm-hmm. So it makes sense that God would speak to Paul because there was probably limited ways for God to get to, to Paul through people. Okay. You feel me? Yeah. And, like... I mean, it also makes sense to me why God would want to talk to him like, hey, bro, what? Yo, hey, hey, yeah, chill hey, out. Hey, <laughs> chill out. hey, what's, what are you doing? <laughs> you know? Stop that. Like, like, I'll handle this one. Like, yeah. oh, boss, that guy Paul is at it again. <laughs> yeah. I got this one. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, like, it makes sense why, you know, my, uh, of course, now, all these reasons why I'm saying it could, these things I'm saying, it can, it makes sense to me. Speculation. Yeah. yeah. I just, I'm not saying it's actually the reason, but it, Something I don't know. No, yeah, yeah. It's just stuff to think about. Yeah, I like you know that's, that's a good breakdown. That make that does make sense. Um, yeah, yeah, but yeah, that's what that's what I was saying. Yeah, like what was he holding on to? But like we, yeah, we. Wow, that's that's interesting. But even think about like Paul himself. Like he was holding on his you gotta, his whole ministry is holding on to one walk. Jesus's walk. The one no, like the one when he was walking, and. And uh, God struck oh, him when about- God struck him blind. Mm-hmm. Like he has to remember that. Yeah, he has to remember that, bro. And here's the thing: people, a lot of people probably are quick, like, "Oh, of course, how could he forget that he was blind?" And then his vision was restored to him. Mm-hmm. Be- like, <clears throat> yeah, okay, You're, I'll give you that. Do you want God to make you blind? <laughs> Do you need a going blind experience to have faith? Is that what you need? Yeah, right. Because God will give it to you if that's what you ask for. Well, I mean, I'm saying that. Like, I don't actually know what God's going to do. Mm-hmm. But I don't think God would have a problem doing that for you. But maybe, what if instead of striking us blind, God is trying to let us have faith with less severe circumstances? Mm-hmm. You know? Like, maybe God's not, like, giving, taking your sight to give it back. But I don't know. Maybe you rolled your ankle. You know, some something that's no, a yeah. lot smaller stakes. Because it could be anything. It would have had to been severe for Paul because or Saul at the time because of where his heart was at at the time. Because he was killing Christians. Yeah. So it's like you and, know, and, you know what they believe. Mm-hmm. You just choose not to believe, and not only choose not to believe it, but you're choosing to like disgrace it as well. Yeah. And for whatever reason that was, because who knows? Because yeah, other I don't than know. being Roman, there has to be like another underlying reason that you just like, oh yeah, I'm gonna not only kill you, but I'm gonna be the best at it. Yeah, <laughs> you I, don't know. Know? Well, I guess think because. It's probably that, bro. Because he's like, he takes pride in what he does. Whatever he does. it is. Because even when he flips. Yeah. Bro, look at how much problem. pride he took. Yeah. Well, not, it's not a problem. It was like, it, it, it's the reason that a lot of us love him. Like, oh. that he went so hard for God. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, he bit, one thing about when he was Paul, he was going hard. And when he was, when he was Saul, he was going hard. And when he was Paul, he was going, going hard. hard. Yeah. The, what changed was 
what he was doing. Mm -hmm. Like, what was the reason that he was going hard? Mm -hmm. Because he was killing them Christians. He was. He was slaying them. He was. And then he went from that to being a church planter in the multiple nations. Yeah. Like, good, like, when he leave, they actually still come to church. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy, right? How many, how many churches do you know that if their pastor went somewhere else they still to plant going. another church yeah. without installing a new pastor, they would still come to church on Sunday? Mm -hmm. Crazy. People probably would just find another church. Mm -hmm. You know? I didn't even realize that Paul was a... That, that's a very good... I he, didn't, was, he was a church planner, bro. Yeah, I knew he was a planner, but I didn't know he was like the pastor of the church. Well, I wouldn't assist... I would say, no, nah, I wouldn't necessarily say he was like the pastor. Mm -hmm. But when you are a pastor in today's, most times you like, you plant the church. Yeah, because he'd be speaking like wherever he go. Mm -hmm. So like, he plants that, because he, he's bringing the faith, like all the countries, bro, for, to a lot of those places, he's bringing the faith and introducing it to people. Right. You know, like how Jonah went to Nineveh? He's doing that for a lot of these people. Yeah. You know? And then he's leaving and going to do it somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And then, he, like, when he's, when in his letters, when he's writing letters, like, I pray you are well, he's writing to the churches that he's established. Like, they're doing yeah, laps, yeah, bro. Yeah, like, yeah, they're yeah. doing laps. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Crazy. And that's true. So because what you said about Paul's pride, I was thinking about from the way the, um, when God had the thorn in him, you know? So, oh. yeah, and it was keeping them from mm. like, becoming powerful also mm -hmm. on that because you know, it's the same type of problem that you would have yeah. had on the other side. Yeah. That's what I was thinking about. Also, um, what I was about to say with the whole church situation, like, uh, Paul's just such a good, he's, just, he's a good, like, role model if you're trying to be, like, a Christian for real, for real. Mm -hmm. Because after he left each and every single spot, each and every single church, he always kept them in his hearts. You feel me? Yeah. And he was always like, yeah, like, I'm not there with you physically, but I'm there with you in spirit. So because I'm there with you in spirit, I'm actually there. Yeah. You just got to believe that I'm there type of thing. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And he was always encouraging them. He was always praying for them. He was He's the one that actually said, it. it's important to pray for like your brothers and sisters. It's important to pray for each other. Yeah. Hold each other up in prayer because you don't want another one to fall. If another yeah. one does fall, like mm -hmm. pray. Uh, <laughs> you no, know? Yeah. Keep praying, be in community, all and all that. And yes, he gets to bro. a point cast by the church, but he was giving all these instructions mm -hmm. and he was really like just a strong, like, leader, yeah. you know? Even through it all, because he was doing all this, the way that he was persecuting Christians, he felt that same persecution, which is crazy. He felt that same persecution mm. that he was giving on the other side when he was Paul. Mm. Now, instead of giving that persecution, he was receiving it. But when he was receiving Bro, it... He has to receive a certain level of grace because he has killed so many Christians and now he's up here talking. Bro, not only <laughs> that, but imagine being a Roman, seeing Paul, like, you used to... Do this with me. How are you going to tell? You were the best one. Yeah. Imagine the mockery that went along with that. They, they, I, I imagine it would have been Bro, worse yeah. for Paul than it was for some other people. Just because you you Paul. And imagine, like, having... Imagine, like, them knowing his past, right? Yeah, literally. They know it at John. And it's like, Paul, you, Paul. Well, they probably still calling him Saul. Saul, yeah, yeah, yeah. Saul, you mean to tell me you used to kill them folk, and now you want me to believe that you were wrong, mm. you want me to believe that you, this the God the the God of the people you used to kill is now the God you serve. Right, I mean you still on the leaderboard for kills. Like, you, <laughs> you got the highest <laughs> kill streak, also and all that. You feel me? It's crazy, bro. Like the grace he had to walk in. Yeah, <sighs> crazy, bro. No, yeah, that's like a mindset shift too. That like, I think that's another reason why Paul, um, because he's the one that always writes about. Well, not always. That was the one time, but he was writing about like I do things I don't want to do. Mm -hmm. Also, that he gets really deep. Yeah. In his letters, you know, he gets really vulnerable. And he's one of the ones that really is like, yo, if you're sinning, like, there is grace for your sin. Like, turn away from your sin, yes, but and there is grace, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And I think another reason why he got so vulnerable with that is because he knew the other side of yeah. things, you know? He was so far deep yeah. on, the, on the deep end. Yeah, bro. And just like, because, you know, when you... When he was killing Christians, he wasn't only killing Christians. He was like murking God in his eyes, mm, you know? Yeah, this yeah. Is like... Forget he was the, trying to wipe it off the earth. Forget the person. Yeah. I'm after something bigger. Yeah, yo, you hit one, bro. You know? Because he really was. He like, was. He was like, it's not about you, bro. It's about the one you serve. Exactly. And when you think about it, bro, it's the same way God is. Okay, go ahead. Because when you think, because if it's about me and you as individuals, everybody would go to heaven. Mm -hmm. It's not like that, though. Look, think about what, what Jesus says. Choose this day who you will serve. Well, not Jesus don't say that. Like, jo I think Joshua says that. He's like, choose this day who you will serve. Oh, because me and my husband are going to serve yeah, the Lord. Joshua, yeah. So, and then even like, 
when Jesus says, this actually is Jesus, if you deny me now, I'll deny you in front of my father. Yeah. Or I think Jesus, again, when he says, like, no man can serve two masters. Yeah. It's not because I don't love you. It's about who you're choosing to serve. serve. Yeah, yeah. Nah, I get you. I get you. I get you. It's crazy because just like you said this um, with Paul, like, it's not about you. It's about who you're serving. Even on the other side of things, God is like, it's not about you. It's about me. Because I'm the one you're serving. So if you mm-hmm. got to die for me, you better die for me. Yeah. Type of I, thing. I, yeah. Yeah, because I already died for you. Mm-hmm. You know? And dying for me, dying for me is not really dying. It's just crossing the border to heaven. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it just happens that you got to die for it. But like, yeah, you like, die, but that's but... what we say, like, like uh, fear is not my future. When it says, like, death is not the end, mm-hmm. you have to live believing that, bro. Or you will be afraid. That can really cripple your belief. Yeah. You know? Because everybody dies. And, like, uh, again, bro, I forget... It's probably in Matthew because that's literally what I'm reading right now. But he says like, like, oh, I think it might be the joint to live for me uh, is gain. It might be oh Philippians twenty. Uh, oh wait, that's Philippians one twenty one. Oh uh, two twenty one. Oh, uh, I'm thinking of a familiar. <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> no way! I wasn't looking at him. One twenty four. I'm pretty sure it is. No, nah, but I was looking for uh, one twenty one. Oh uh, snap! Wait, hold on. Uh. Okay, I was thinking of Matthew 13. I think it's Matthew 13. But ba- like the part when 21. it's- <laughs> It's gotta be. It's gotta be. It's gotta be. Ryan's been trying to memorize scriptures if you can't. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that was already locked in, bro. I'm just saying that 25, for 16, 17. <laughs> that joint gotta be 21, bro. I'm not moving on. Yeah, it's 21. Yeah, I knew that one. Yeah. Say the scripture. We're not gonna to, do I don't gotta read it. No, read for it. me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Yeah. yeah. I know that one. That's one of my that's my favorite verse now. And so it's like that same joint, bro. Like when you when you understand that, oh I went right past it. But that joint. You got to understand, bro, when God is saying, sometimes we're afraid, like, when God's like, die for me, we're like, God, why would you want me to die for you? Like, that's so much. Like, ugh, mm-hmm. ugh, ugh, brother, ugh. You know? Yeah, brother, ugh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's how we feel when God has to do stuff like that. But here's what it says. It says, because, oh, no. It says, for whoever to him shall be given, he shall have much, I don't, okay. I'm, this is why I don't read King James when I'm reading the people, because that joint. <laughs> <laughs> you got to break that joint yeah, down. Yeah, that's from when I'm reading to, my, to myself, bro. But in Matthew 13, 12, it says, For whoever has to him, more will be given, and he will have abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. And it's just like, bro, this is why you should want to follow God. Because it says, bro, like, if you have, meaning, like, the mysteries of heaven. I should have read the verse above that. It says, uh, they said when the disciples said, why do you speak in parables? And he said, because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of, of heaven. But to them, it has not been given. For whoever has, meaning understanding the mysteries of heaven, yeah. more will be given, and he will have abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, bro, to not choose and to not, like, be with the kingdom of heaven is to literally forfeit everything else you have. Because you're if you're afraid to die for God because it, you got to die, well, well, guess what? One day you had to die anyway. Mm-hmm. And if you refuse, like, to, to bear Jesus, when you die, you'll just spend eternity in hell instead of spending eternity in heaven. Bro, yes, I love all that. And this gives me an opportunity to say one of my Colossians verses. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm going to say it. Um, Colossians 3, 4, this says, When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Mm. That lets you know, bro, that everything on here, this earth, that we're on a mission. Christ is like, yo, when I come back, you with me. Because right now, you know, we always like, oh, yeah, mm-hmm. to God be the glory. To God, it's always going to be that way. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. To God be the glory. But Christ is so generous that he's like, yo, you served me on this earth, so now when I come back, you're going to be in the glory too. No, yeah. You know? Yeah. And that glory glory is a heavy word when it comes to Christianity because no, it's like, yeah. oh, uh, don't take the glory, which is true. Don't take the yeah. glory. But God's glory, like, yo, yes. you're going to, don't want to worry about nothing on earth. Go ahead and die. You know? Because yeah. when I come back, yo, we're going to come back with the iron fist. Mm-hmm. You know? It's up. It's, 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 it's be- <laughs> hold on. <laughs> hold on. You got a scripture? Yeah, I do. I do. 
Mm-hmm. Colossians. <laughs> Colossians 3.14. I went with 3.13, so I didn't write that one down. I'm going to go look at 3.13 first before I just read that one. Um, Colossians 3.13. Let me see what that one says. Uh, yeah, I'll say that. I'll, I'll just read 12 through 13. So it says, Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another. If anyone has complaint against, against one another, even as Christ forgave you, you must also do. And the 14th is the one I want to read, which is this. But above all else, oh no, but above all these things, put on love, which is a bond of perfection. And mm. this is talking about in the sense of like humanity and everything, but I'm thinking about the bond between me and Christ, mm-hmm. you know? Because I'm like, yo, God, like our bond is perfection because love is a bond of perfection, you know? And that's what I have with you. You know what I mean? So if you tell me to do whatever on this earth, that's why I'm like, I'm just going to do it. Mm. I don't care about, about the, the consequences. Because if you with me, I'm good. Because the Bible says, if you stand with me, who can stand against me? Right, yeah. So everything else is already, ain't, yeah. ain't no other thoughts after that. Mm. You know, because that's how hard I believe the Bible. So God, if you walk with me, tell me to do whatever you want me to do, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. And if I die, I die. Yeah. Because flip is, again, flip is 121, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Yeah. So both those verses are coming together. So I got the bond of perfection. I got the to live is Christ and to die is gain. And I got the... um. Um, if you stand with me, no one can stand against me. And I got the James verse saying, if I come close to you, you will come close to me. I got all these things working in tandem together, yeah. saying that even if you die, you're good, but if you live, you even better. No, wait, other way around. If you live, you're good, but if you die, you're even better. <sighs> mm. Because those are all different verses, but it's all the same book. You feel me? And it's all coming from the same God. Same God. And I'm going to add one more. Go ahead. Join, bro. Because I don't want people thinking that we're like gung ho on dying, you know. <laughs> I'll die right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I'm actually itchy, but it was right on time. <laughs> but it's like think about uh, the scripture back in Matthew when he had just did his forty days fasting and the enemy was tempting him, right? Mm-hmm. And he was like, "Jump, mm-hmm. God will save you." And he's like, "Yeah, but it also says not to like tempt God, like tempting, not tempt God, like." Temptation, how we think, but not provoking God, not doing something out of spite to just be like, watch what God going to do. Yeah. Because th- then you're, you're treating God like, 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 uh, like, like a, like, a, like a part of your magic act. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, on command, God can just, God, do this for me. Mm-hmm. It's like, God, come show my friends. Come on, God. Like, they don't, they don't, they don't believe in you. Like, I believe in you. So like, and, and like, you know, so just do, do that thing you do, you know, yeah. like do something. So it's like, Yes, all those scriptures are so true. Like, was especially the one, uh, do the one about die in his gain. Say that one again. To live, to live as Christ and to die as gain. Boom. So, like, that is true. At the same time, that doesn't mean put your life in for danger. For me, to live as Christ and to die as gain. I didn't add that first part. <laughs> no, let's do it again. <laughs> for me, to live as Christ, to live as Christ and to die as gain. And so it's like, with that in mind, at the same time, that doesn't mean put yourself in harm's way, mm-hmm. because now. You're only the only reason you're putting yourself in harm's way is because you're like that's not the way like you're you're just trying to put yourself in harm's way. You're not actually trying to serve the purpose of God. Mm. It should be like I'm serving God and if this happens, yeah, you know, like don't go out seeking harm. Mm. Don't go out seeking a martyr's death. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like that like that's like saying um uh bro, I don't know. I know. Go ahead. That's like, because there's like I said, there's two differences between harm's way and harm's way, which is the same word. So it's crazy. But Paul being in a harm's way, because we know Paul, he was crucified. He was he was always in harm's way. You feel me? But God put him in harm's way. Right. He, he was he had a hedge of protection over him. Yeah. So even when he was in dangerous spaces, he was safe, no mm. matter where he was going. You feel me? Oh. When when um what's that what's that boy's name? Twelfth disciple. Um, Matthias. No. Judas. What, Judas. When he put himself in harm's way, he put himself in harm's he way. He put himself in harm's way. God wasn't with him when he right. put himself in harm's way. He left God's he protection. That wasn't, yeah. That, and which is why he ended up, not only was he deceived and used by the devil, and the devil actually took over his body. You mm. know? That's what the Bible says. And mm, not only that. The- yeah, yeah, yeah. And not only that, after he, the devil was done with him, you know, who you knows what happens to your mind after the devil's done with you. <laughs> you feel me? So this could have been another reason why he committed suicide later on. Torment. Yeah. And that's why, like, in a Bible, like, there's some of those phrases, like, when you talk about the Bible like that, 
it decodes some of the phrases. Like when Jesus said, it'd be better for that man to never have been born. Right. Because the torment, what is the torment like? Like how exactly, you just said. Exactly, exactly. Like what is that like to exactly. have the devil in your mind Bro. and then have to come... God and, and know that you're not uninvited from the table of disciples. Bro, bro, bro. <laughs> no, because God sent a tormented spirit to David's uh who was the king that during that period? Ahab? I don't remember who it was. I don't think it was Ahab. It might have I don't know. I'm not really good with that part. But either way, he sent a tormented spirit to that king. And the only re- the only way that tormenting spirit was gonna leave that king alone was when David was playing the what was Oh, you talking about a song? Was that, that was Saul, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, that was Saul. Saul. Yeah, different yeah, Saul. yeah. Uh, King Saul, which was back in, in the Old Testament. Yeah. So, um, yeah, King Saul. Basically, I forget why the tormenting spirit got sent. Uh, oh, is that? Yeah, it's the timer. That sounds better. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I forget why King Saul um had the tormenting spirit sent to him. But either way, when the tormenting spirit was sent to him, he was like, "Yo, this is so unbearable. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my gosh, every time this thing comes around." I need David to come here and play this song mm-hmm. because I can't bear it otherwise. So I think after, if I'm not tripping, David ended up running from Saul because Saul. Well, because when he would play, it got to the point when he would when he would play the harp, he would start throwing his spears at the him. harp. That's what, it, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm about. <laughs> so what in the world? What are we doing here, Saul? No, yeah, like yeah. Like you told me to come here to help you out. Yeah, exactly. But 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 I, ooh, I would go ahead. I would argue. No, go ahead. <laughs> I let you go. I would argue that. As Saul, because he had things in his heart that were in agreement with the tormenting spirit. Mm. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Because the th- so there was things that Saul was serving in himself that serve the enemy and not God. Mm-hmm. So think about the tormenting spirit. Like, well, the tormenting spirit was sent by God. But I don't want to go all the way down that route. But it's like there's stuff in Saul that is so off that even... When David is ushering in the presence of God, he can't bear that. Mm. Because he likes the presence of God, but he might not like that it's coming through David. Mm. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Because David is the one who's like doing all this great stuff. David's the same one they're singing about. David's the same one they're giving all this praise to. But I'm the king. But I got this tormenting spirit. And David's the only one who who has the anointing to play this harp to bring me a sense of peace. Mm -hmm. But I don't like David. Mm. I feel you. So he starts trying to kill him. Yeah. He starts trying to kill the only one who can help usher in a sense of peace. Because mm-hmm. it's not that Saul can't get it, but he's in love with the, the seat of the throne so much that he is like no longer really listening to God. Mm. That's good. Because that's, I don't know, yeah. But th- was that the reason he started trying to kill him? He was upset with David because... Oh, because he was going to take his... Oh, yeah, because they started because singing they were, songs. Yeah, because David was, was take getting so much praise. Mm-hmm. But mind you, like, even that, they only got there because Saul gave up <laughs> his own responsibility. Yeah. Like, yeah, bro. Because I'm pretty sure... I can't remember this sequence. I'm not going to go there because I can't remember the sequence of events. But, like, why would Saul, as king... Like, even think about it. When David was king, he was on the battlefield. Mm-hmm. Not Saul. Yeah. I think Saul went to battle before, but like yeah, but he was uh, he, he was like no, nah, I'm not doing this. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. He would pick and choose. Yeah, and, but at this point though, Saul is king of Israel. Yeah. So it's like it's not just anybody. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not. He's not just the king of any nation. He's the king of Israel, the nation of God. Yeah. This is what the king of God's land does. Yeah. And not- God, it's like God's like, bro, you can't. I can't. Can't do that. But mind you, way before all of this, like Saul sat in the throne, but David Ben had anointed to be king. Mm-hmm, absolutely. Ben. Yeah. Like some time Humble. ago. Yeah. Because God's hand was already off Saul at this point. Mm-hmm. But he was sitting in the seat. Mm-hmm. So I also, you also could argue that's probably what like was going on spiritually. Like Saul being the one that was anointed and lost the anointing. Mm-hmm. And here's the one who is anointed, mm-hmm. but Saul doesn't know that either, because Samuel anointed Saul. I mean, Samuel anointed David, but yeah. Saul might not necessarily know that David is the one that got anointed to be king. So all that pride that he has, he might not even know why he's like can't stand David so much. That anointing is on David to sit where you're sitting. That's another difference um, with the harm thing, because 
Saul, Saul had put himself in harm. Because David was in harm's way. Um, every single time, you know, you go to war, you in harm's way. Mm-hmm. But even before that, um, when Saul was still chasing him around, like there was a point where Saul put himself in harm's way. And he didn't even know it when he was in the right. cave. He was right. in the cave and he was in David's hands. And the man was telling David, yo, go ahead and take yeah, him out because right. he's wilding. Mm-hmm. And David was like, nah, I can't touch God's anointed one. Right. So in that moment, David was like, he's, a re- he's the only reason, the only reason. <laughs> that Saul obedience. stayed alive. Yeah. Otherwise, like Saul putting himself in harm's way without even knowing yeah. it was going to be his death. And this is yeah. because he stopped following God however long ago. But this, this then he, he was chasing David though too, right? Yeah, that's a crazy yeah, part. He, he had was been chasing, chasing him. David. Yeah. So it's like even before he went into the cave, he sought David out. So like again, like to your point, like he's putting himself in, in harm's, harm's way. way. Like you're trying to put yourself in a place to fight. Yeah. You know? And you don't gotta do that. You don't. And that's what we were saying, like, you, like, cause I'm talking about like death a lot, simply because I'm trying to go so hard. Like this, let's know how important it is to serve God while we're here. Yeah. You know, and how like how important it should be to you. Like, yes. Death is like here, and serving God is here. Like mm-hmm. I'm, you don't, you shouldn't fear death when you love God that much, because you should fear God. And once you fear God, you won't fear anything else. Yeah, and if you fear God, that means you also respect His word, and so that you you literally know that death is not the end. Like it's not, it's not, it's not all there is. Yeah, and like I want to give a little more context to like uh, how you've been saying like with the death and stuff. Like even like another good example for like living for God. And if it's da- if it happens to be dangerous, then so be it. But not like just deliberately throwing yourself out there. Right. Think about like again, we're talking about like New Testament Paul and the disciples, right? Yeah. Paul was sanctioned. Like God told, led him to go to those different nations. There was a lot of nations that God told the disciples not to go to. Mm-hmm. You feel me? And it's like you could imagine, like if they had gone there then they might have, they would have, they definitely would have been in harm's way. Like when you think about like how them being killed and like being in jail and all these different things, going into those nations would have been putting themselves into harm's way. Right. You know, but Paul, on the other hand, he was definitely always in harm's way, but like he was following God. And so I think that's different. Like, you know, you can't be so like over like excited or over anxious to serve God that you start doing things to serve him that he hasn't asked you to do. You know? Yeah. Like that's that's major. I'm looking for this verse who without partially judges according to one. Because even like, when you think about like John, John the Baptist. Yeah. Like he he was definitely put in harm's way. Most definitely. You know what I'm saying? Or even like Jesus. Think about baby Jesus, bro. Harm, not being put in harm's way. Yeah. Like what if Joseph was like, when, when the angel was like, yo, Joseph, take the baby. They, they killing babies. Mm-hmm. Take the baby Jesus out of here. And he's like, no, I will stand in harm's way for the Lord will protect me. Right, 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 right. <laughs> It's like, but I'm telling you to I'm go. I'm trying to leave, yeah. <laughs> you know what no. I'm saying? So it's like, you don't just do stuff just because, like, you're trying to prove, like, oh, God will save me. Listen to what God tells you. Like, he's just go. The main thing is be obedient. Go where he's guiding you. And if it's dangerous, trust you have protection. So, but don't just jump into danger and be like, God, protect me. Like, that's not... What are you doing, bro? Like, who is that for? Okay, this is the verse I was looking for. Most definitely. And to go on top of everything you literally just said, it's like 1 Peter 7, 1, 17. It says, And if you call on the Father who without partially judges, according to each one's work, conduct yourself throughout the time of your stay here in fear. So literally, you can forget everything else except for the last two lines. Conduct yourself throughout the... Well, don't forget, but you know what I mean. <laughs> conduct yourself throughout the time of your stay here in fear. There's so many verses that talk about just in order to have obedience towards God, you have to fear God first. Mm -hmm. Because fearing God is the root of obeying God. And if you don't fear God, you most likely are not going to obey God because you don't fear him, you know? Yeah. I would say fear, to fear God, means to recognize who he is and what he is. Yeah, right. Not like fear like I'm afraid of you. Fear as in like there's a deep reverence from you. Because you said what you just said. Like the power that he holds in his hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. what the heck? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So like when, when you... Live life like this, and you conduct your stay here on earth in fear for God, you are not going to want to place yourself in harm's way because mm. you're going to want to place yourself in God's way. Yeah. You know, the Bible talks, this kind of correlates, not kind of, it definitely does. It correlates with the verse that talks about there's a straight and narrow path that we have to walk. Mm-hmm. And on that straight and narrow path, it's filled with the fear of God, which mm-hmm. is why also in Psalms, I think 23, it says, um, 
I know Psalms 23. Um, Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want him. He leads me down the path of righteousness for my namesake. The path of righteousness is that straight and narrow path, but also in Psalms 23, later down the line, it says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow, shadow, of, death. Death, shadow of death. That must mean the, val the valley of the shadow mm. of death is on that straight and narrow path that, I that I'm walking in fear of God. See, it's, it's, <laughs> well, go ahead. Go ahead. See, though I, though I walk through the, the valley of the shadow of death, mm -hmm. I shall feel no evil. Because guess, thou guess, what, guess what another psalm says? What? I'm in the, the shadow of his wing. Mm. You feel me? Mm. Mm. So the shadow of death, it might be over me, mm -hmm. but I'm in the shadow of God's wing too. Oh my gosh, I got to do that thing. I got to stop you. Do it. I, because... You know the verse that talks about our salvation and says that no one can take you. From, Jesus is like no one can take you from my hand because you were in my hand, and no one can take you from Wait, my slow hand. Down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. No one can take you from my. No one can snatch you from my hand because you were mine, and then the Father has given you to me, and no one can take me out of the Father's hand. So mm -hmm. Jesus is in the Father's hand, and we are in Jesus' hand. Right. It's like a shadow of the shadow, like you were mm -hmm. just saying. Yeah. In the valley of the shadow of the of death. There is. You know, the shadow of death, mm -hmm. but there's also God's shadow. Like you yeah. were saying, we are in his shadow. Yeah. So it's the shadow of the shadow. Whose shadow is greater? God's. Obviously God's yeah. shadow, which is why I can walk through that shadow mm -hmm. and be fearless. I and, and it's like, peep this, bro. Peep the difference in these shadows. Okay. Bro. Peep the difference in these shadows. The shadow of death is not death itself. Okay. What is it? It's just a shadow. Oh. So what it means is you think... Like David is acknowledging, I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death. So that means death is not actually here. Mm, mm, it's a shadow. The shadow of death brings forth, it tries to provoke fear. Mm. Because it's like, think about when you're like, when you watch an anime, you're watching a TV show or, or a movie, and like you, you see somebody on the, gr on the ground, right? They're standing on the ground. And then you can see the shadow start to come over them, and they realize the shadow is going, and what do they do? Mm. Like, even if they don't look up, they're like, what is that? Right, I feel you. What is that? Right, 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 right. Fear. It wants to provoke fear. It's not actually getting you because, like what you said, no one can snatch you out of my hand. That literally reminds me exactly of the sleep paralysis thing with me. And you guys are saying that the demon is just trying to, uh, to provoke fear in He's you trying guys. to intimidate you. Yeah, that's what you guys are exactly. Yeah. Now I got to give you guys context. Basically, when I get sleep paralysis, sometimes I'll see things. Sometimes things in my room will start to float. And I don't know I'm about to get stuck in it. Sometimes I'll just feel like, you know, you just wake up, you just can't move. And like, I don't always see things, but sometimes I do see things. This one particular time, which was the last time I had it, I saw something. And this time it scared me more than like usual. And I wasn't scared when I saw it. But after I woke up and I kept thinking about it days and days on, I was like, that was kind of scary. And mm -hmm. I didn't like that one. But basically in my house, my room is attached to like my bathroom. And this figure was standing, like, ceiling to the ground, mad big, just staring at me. And he was guarding my bathroom, or just guarding my room, just staring at me, whatever he was guarding or whatever. And, like, like you're saying, he was just trying to intimidate me because he didn't touch me. Now, let me ask you, what color was it? It was black. Shadow. Yeah, exactly, exactly, right. Exactly, a shadow. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking about. Yep. Because and it's crazy because it's, like, it's all fake. It's it, like it's an illu it's an illusion, bro. Yeah, it's like it's you, an illusion. You just like he's all about the like, bro. It's the intimidation. Not, yes, yeah. Like because again, his thing, just like what he did to Job, he like God allowed the enemy to just put a bunch of shadows mm. all over Job's life, and then when in his efforts to put all those shadows, he's trying to make Job. He's trying to make Job confess that there's no more light. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That God is not real. Mm -hmm. That God is not good. That God does not have me the way that I thought he did. Now that there are all these shadows all around me. But it's like, the shadows, was Job ever actually harmed? No. Did Job ever come close to dying? No. I feel you. Yeah, because and that's it, it, that's he's just trying to make you like yeah, quit. he and wants to make you quit. That's even after like God took his protection off of him. Yeah, he was still like just not harmed. He, actually, I think he wasn't allowed to kill Job. I'm not no, yeah, sure. he wasn't. He yeah, okay, okay, but still, okay, but like yeah, it, but 
that goes to show that um, even though the shadows are here, that doesn't mean they can't affect. They have no can, authority. They to have no access authority. You, like, they can they still can't take things away. Type of thing. Stuff you know around I mean? you. Yeah, stuff around you. Yeah, But they yeah, can't yeah. because you're not your stuff. Mm-hmm. And that's why I was about to say, um, our, treasures aren't, our treasures aren't supposed to be on earth. The, <laughs> he can't take the treasures that are... Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> set, set your mind on things above where you are. And not... I don't, I don't want to... I don't want to... I don't want to... You're right. I don't want to butcher it. You're right. You're not butchering it. Set your mind. Set your mind on things above where Christ... Your, and not Christ. on the earth. Yeah. Are you this, thinking the other one? I think about a different one. Set your mind on things above where Christ is. Because set your mind on things above where Christ is. He's with your father. Oh, never mind. I'm just going to look. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's okay. I can just search it because I know what it's called. Yep. Here we go. Okay. Yeah, set your mind on things above. No, not that one. I think you're mixing them then. No. No, he's not mixing them. No, I am. <laughs> Say boom. <laughs> yeah, set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. You better say it like it means something. <laughs> set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. Colossians 3, 2. That's not, the, that's not what I thought it said. <laughs> <laughs> but like, that's, that's the main idea. Oh, yeah, bro. That's on. But I said the next verse, too. The next verse works, too. When, you, when Christ, who is our bigger life of people... Well, no, not that one. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. That's Colossians 3.3. 3. So, yeah. Basically, everything that we said. I forget why I was even going to go there. We were talking about intimidation and how, like, he was... Oh, yeah, the treasures. On, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, like, when your treasures are on earth, I mean, are in, are, on, um, are in heaven and it, where they're supposed to be. Because, like, if we're kingdom, if we're kingdom children, then we're supposed to have kingdom treasures, meaning mm-hmm. that we shouldn't have any earthly treasures. So, if anything on earth gets touched, not saying that you wouldn't feel a type of way if they went away or whatever, right. because you still care about the things that you have on earth, but it shouldn't affect you so much that you leave God. You know? Right. Yeah. And that's, that's really what it means. That's to what have. it was about. Yeah, he was yeah, trying yeah. to make him stop believing in God. Literally. Yeah. And I, I heard somebody say, Stop. I heard somebody say before, um, whenever the enemy attacks you, he's not after the thing he's attacking. He's after your relationship with God. That's true. Yeah. Because even when he attacked Jesus, he was after that relationship with himself. Yeah. He wasn't, he just wanted, he, yeah, he wanted Jesus to, he wanted Jesus to to doubt. He was trying to get Jesus to test his relationship with God. Yeah. You know, like, prove things that are already proven. Yeah. He's like, yeah, you God, right? Well, so, <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, right. Look kind of steep down there. Mm-hmm. Type of thing. Yeah, bro. I don't think you can make it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but, but yeah. I'm good. I'm good. You said a lot. That's all, folks. Okay, did folks. Say, oh, did you want to say something? I was like, I was, I was making sure I was, I had anything else to say. Oh. But I don't. <laughs> <laughs>